the steady-state theory was a major cosmological model that emerged as an alternative to the Big Bang theory. It was proposed in the late 1940s by Sir Fred Hoyle, Thomas Gold, and Herman Bondi. Unlike the Big Bang theory, which posits a beginning and an evolving universe, the steady-state theory claims that the universe is eternal and unchanging on a large scale. It maintains that the universe looks the same at any point in time and space. To reconcile an unchanging universe with the observed expansion of the universe, as evidenced by the redshift of galaxies, the steady-state theory proposes that new matter is continuously created to fill the voids left by the expanding galaxies. This creation of new matter was hypothesized to occur very slowly at a rate sufficient to maintain a constant average density of the universe. According to steady-state theory, the universe is homogeneous and isotropic not only in space but also in time. In other words, the universe's large-scale properties are the same, regardless of where or when they are observed. In this model, there is no moment of creation and no beginning or end of the universe. This contrasts sharply with the Big Bang theory, which starts with a singular event that began the expansion and evolution of the universe. Some scientists were uncomfortable with the Big Bang theory because it implied a beginning of the universe. This notion of a beginning was seen by some as having religious or philosophical connotations resembling a creation event. The steady-state theory, with its assertion of an eternal, unchanging universe, avoided these implications and was more appealing to those seeking a purely physical and infinite model of the universe. This theory was appealing to some scientists because of its simplicity and symmetry. The idea of a universe that looks the same at all times and in all places was seen as elegant and parsimonious, avoiding the complexities of a dynamic, evolving universe. At the time, the observable universe appeared to be static and unchanging on large scales. The tools and methods for observing distant galaxies and deep space phenomena were still developing, and the evidence for an expanding universe was not as clear-cut as it is today. This theory was proposed by respected and influential astronomers, including Fred Hoyle, Thomas Gold, and Herman Bondi. Their prominence in the scientific community helped gain attention and consideration for the theory. The CMB was accidentally discovered in 1965 by Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson. They observed a mysterious, persistent microwave radiation coming uniformly from all directions in the sky, which they couldn't attribute to any known source. This discovery earned them the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1978. The CMB is the afterglow of the Big Bang. About 380,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe cooled enough for electrons and protons to combine and form neutral hydrogen atoms. Prior to this time, the universe was a hot, dense plasma where photons were constantly scattered by free electrons. Once neutral atoms formed, the photons could travel freely. The CMB is the remnant of these photons, stretched into the microwave range by the expansion of the universe. Analysis of the CMB has helped determine various fundamental parameters of the universe, such as its age, shape, and composition. For example, it has provided evidence for the existence of dark matter and dark energy, which are believed to make up most of the universe's mass energy content. Moreover, studying the CMB is like looking back in time to the very early universe. It allows cosmologists to understand the conditions shortly after the Big Bang, and to test theories about the universe's infancy and its subsequent evolution. The discovery of the CMB in 1965 was a critical blow to the steady-state theory. This radiation is a relic of the early universe, consistent with the predictions of the Big Bang model, but not explained by the steady-state theory. Moreover, observations showed that galaxies evolve over time and that the distribution of quasars and galaxies is not uniform, as would be expected in a steady-state universe. Instead, these observations align more closely with a universe that began and has evolved over time. On the other hand, the Big Bang theory accurately predicts the relative abundances of light elements, hydrogen, helium, lithium, in the early universe, 
which the steady state theory does not account for. The Big Bang Theory, while foundational in cosmology, faces several key challenges. The singularity problem highlights the breakdown of known physics at the universe's supposed point of origin, an infinite density and temperature singularity. The horizon problem questions how disparate regions of the universe share a uniform temperature without having interacted. The flatness problem deals with the universe's precise flatness, requiring finely tuned initial conditions. The matter-antimatter -matter asymmetry, where the universe is dominated by matter despite predictions of equal matter and antimatter, remains unexplained. Additionally, the Big Bang theory doesn't inherently account for the existence and properties of dark matter and dark energy, nor does it fully explain the formation of galaxies and larger structures. The theory of cosmic inflation was introduced to address some of these issues, proposing a rapid expansion phase in the early universe but it too raises new questions. Finally, observational limitations constrain our understanding of the universe's earliest moments. These challenges and uncertainties drive ongoing research and the development of new theories to address the Big Bang Theory's limitations.